this so how do I how to go forward? Right. Hello, thank you all for being here. Um, my name is Virginia Klausmeyer. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Silvatex Biofuels. Uh, Silvatex was the foundation for the technology was developed by my late father, William Klausmeyer, and we have now taken our uh, smart fuel, if you will, we're taking that to market. Uh, if there's anything I want you to walk away with from my six minute presentation, I'm sure I'm gonna fly through. Um, that is that we take a diesel fuel, we displace 40, more than 40% of the fuel with uh, ingredients derived of biomass. Without, uh, we decrease emissions without de or affecting the, the power output. So, well, where's the problem? So pollution is a big problem. People think that today to use an alternative fuel, you have to give up something. You have to give up power. You have to give up, um, there's not the fuel readily available. You have to buy a new car. You have to give up access. Actually, that's not the case. There is a solution out there. You can actually have a fuel that can be used mainstream and can cost less. Silvatex actually offers that solution specifically. So we displace the, the diesel fuel by 40%. We reduce the emissions, the carbon, the harmful emissions, the carbon particulate matter, the NOx, without affecting the performance. We also work within the current infrastructure so that ultimately reduces the cost for the product. And we have developed a licensing technology um, or licensing model so that we can partner with the oil and agri companies as opposed to working against them. Our technology has also worked and um, is compatible with other types of emissions control technologies and has improved performance there as well. So how does it, our technology work? Well, it uses an emulsified, um, an emulsified technology. So the main basis is we're putting water and ethanol into diesel, which is an oil-based fuel. So our proprietary information is the Silvatex additive fuel. Using a simple splash blending process, we have a homogenous fuel at the end. So it seems pretty simple, right? Actually, this took about 10 years of development to develop the specific, to, the specific ingredients and the amount of the ingredients and the actual blending process. You know, you might be thinking, well, why has this been done before if it's so unique and it has all these properties? Well, the idea of emulsified fuels has been around for some time. They just haven't really worked before. So the other fuels have used this macro emulsion, if you will. So going back to the other slide, we really had the bubble. It just was a bigger bubble. So they added more water or more aqueous solution in that bubble. That created an unstable product, which was not able to be scaled. It would cost, you know, that you needed to have heavy duty equipment to do massive blending. And our product does not require that. We actually have a simple blending process, which has a stable product. So you can see there on the left, it um, resembles diesel pretty, or biodiesel pretty extensively. Um, it remains mixed. We have samples that are over 10 years old, and it does not require any new equipment. We use renewable, non-toxic, readily available, ingredients for our, um, for our main components. Our emulsion, so the main basis of our technology is the micro emulsion. Um, just to give you some ideas, we can use this in multiple different areas, but we're using it currently and focus on the fuel industry. So how, why will this work? Uh, well, we're cost competitive because we're folk, we actually touch on um, and have benefits everywhere along the life cycle. So we work with, or uh, we're using renewable, non-toxic raw materials that are you know, becoming more readily available. You can use locally sourced materials to cut down your carbon. The, the blending process is simple, splash blending process at the refinery level. We're using 40% less petroleum, ultimately cost competitive when it comes down to the pump, and a sustainable choice for the consumer. Who are customers and benefits at early stages where our customers are the private fuel sector, so the ports of LA, the military, and then we're gonna be moving on to licensing agreements with the wholesale fuel distributors, so the Chevrons of the world. How this product helps to meet the emissions reduction mandates um, immediately, and then also conserves oil and creates a cost-effective, sustainable option that, can, that utilizes the local manufacturing process. So we're not trying to recreate the real, you know, we're, we're trying to work with it. Um, our market entrance is, um, I think Gavin Newsom gave a nice entrance today, that we have a lot of partners working with us today. So the biggest users, the heaviest polluters, the ports of LA, the ports of Long Beach, the US Army. Um, we've also established relationships with the governing bodies that help enforce all these incentivizations and policies that are in place. We also have to be partnering with the fuel additive companies, the engine manufacturers, and the biofuel companies so that we can have a sustainable, effective product. Um, okay. So our customers will change over time. Um, at the beginning, the early adopters, as I mentioned, we're going to be using 
um, creating revenue from a premix sale. So we're actually going to be selling the premix of our micro emulsion to the big, biggest users. And then after we do proof of concept and do get through the pilot and the verification phase, then we're going to be licensing the technology for royalty and licensing sales to the bigger commercial users for mass distribution. Um, I'm going to sort of fly through this because don't have very much time. <laughs> but the main idea is that we have, the diesel market is a huge market. In the US, it's about a $170 billion market. In California alone, it's a $12 billion market. If we penetrated 0 0.08 of the California market, that's close to $3 million in revenue for our product. Um, the diesel, diesel market's not going anywhere, it's only expanding. Our product, which is a huge um, advantage, is that it's cost competitive right now with diesel and it's, gonna, it's forecasted to decrease with the increase of in, uh, availability for biomass ingredients and diesel obviously is going to be increasing consistently. Um, where are we right now? Well, we've been very focused on developing a micro emulsion um, or our product around for the diesel fuel. We actually received a grant to do the optimization for this fuel, and now we're starting a piloting and verification program, and we'll also scale up, oper scale up operations. And yeah, <laughs> this is our big vision. So uh, big vision is you know you're gonna go to the gas tank and you're gonna see our product and have it available to, for your diesel vehicles. Thank you. Yeah. So you talked about some other markets, uh, uh -huh. medicine, cosmetics, and the like, which are all markets that generally sell at uh, very, very high prices per gallon relative to fuels. And a lot of other biofuels companies have found, man, let's go into those markets. Those are all multi-billion dollar markets, and as we drop costs, eventually we'll get into fuels. Why, why aren't you pursuing that strategy? Because it doesn't really create, solve the problem. I mean, we have a huge problem pollution, and if we were a company that was only about making money, I mean, there's not a doubt that it's a profit, you know, there's money to be made in every different market, but there's a problem that's hard to tackle, and we have a good solution. I mean, I'm young, we have time, I'll make it happen. <laughs> I like that comment. <laughs> so, if you can go back to that cost slide. Do you actually want me to go? Uh, yeah, so can you explain a bit more about how how it, how your cost works? So you're going to have um, you're going to have a diesel product. You're allowed you, you're able to use a lot less of it, and then you put in some of your emulsion, which adds back costs and so forth. Can you just kind of walk through how that? Yeah. So I mean, if you just look at this is our product. So um, our right here, you have this the diesel, which is a little bit more than half, and then our product, which is a little bit less than half, and that has the veggie oil, the ethanol, and the water. Right now, if you just get off the shelf prices, this, you know, for low volume, if I was just going to make a gallon of it, it costs us, it costs four dollars and forty cents. So with how much diesel is right now, it's pretty much cost com cost comparison. Um, we have, I mean, there's ways that we can cut costs. So we were watering down the ethanol, so we don't need to get ethanol at 99 percent grade. We can get it at more 67 percent grade. So when we start developing those strategic relationships with the ethanol companies, that will bring down costs significantly. And then also when the different oil, you know, different biomass becomes more readily available, that will be bring down the cost significantly as well. Right. So the um Sorry, was that not really? No, I think that was, yeah, okay. that was helpful. Okay. So the, uh, the ethanol content, yep. if my vehicle is not a flex fuel or something that's made for the higher corrosive properties of ethanol, how does, how does your mixture affect my engine? That's a great question. So the flex fuel, that's for gasoline, um, gas, gas cars. Sure. We're, we're right. talking about diesel cars here. Yep. And what we did, we really developed the technology so it fit the diesel spec as much as, much as possible. So that's the flash point, that's the viscosity, that's everything. Um, some of it was because you know we, we need to work with the engine manufacturers. There's actually a lot of push for the engine manufacturers to be working with biofuel companies, so they're developing engines that are going to work with ours or with other new technologies. Um, but right now we haven't had a problem, and we've we've tested this in um, about eight different engines, and we have a large amount of emissions data, and we haven't had any complications yet. So, what, great question. What's, what's the performance difference? Is it less energy dense, more energy dense? No, no. There's no. There's been no performance difference. So we actually did um, a, we did a, a study with AQMD, and that's out for public view if you want to see it. But there there was no no major significant performance decrease. Great. Can you blend it at even higher levels, or why why is the well we um, that's a great question. We haven't we were really trying to optimize performance with the quantities and something, and also keep in mind that we're trying to keep the same specs of the properties. 
And we, we saw when we were blending at higher volumes, then the veggie oil was making it more viscous. And we, yeah, so the amount we thought 43% is pretty good, better than anything that you can get right now. You know, if we can get that with cost competitive, with reducing emissions on, without affecting performance, then we're gonna be good. But if we go over that, if we keep on adding in more veggie oil, I think that we probably would see a power decrease. So, I don't know, if the customer wants that, I'm sure it could be possible, sure. but yeah. You can go lower, a lower blend percentage as well. Yeah, yeah, that's not the issue. So if you decided to use diesel one day and then use the microemulsion another day, then that wouldn't be an issue. How is it made? Oh, oh. simple splash blending. You can come over to our booth, we'll show you. Two buckets. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much.